Volkswagen have come a very long way in the last 60 years. However, their message of delivering the people's car hasn't changed. With the original Beetle being that original car for the everyday person, this, the 2017 Up, is exactly that. But this is no normal Up. This is a 90 PS variant with a beep sound system that produces 300 watts of pure audio pleasure. I guess you can say the upshot of a small car is that it's small, but when it comes to equipment, that tends to be a bit of a drawback, and especially my industry. So this is my standard gear test. So the seats went down, but everything went in. And, and actually, if the boot was either a tiny bit bigger or my equipment was a little bit smaller, everything would have gone in. With the boot that you're able to push down a little bit, there's more than enough room, especially for your weekly shop, which in fairness is probably the only thing this boot will get used to. This specific car on the road, you can go to a dealer and buy for just above 13,000 pounds. Before that 13,000 pounds, you do get things like DAB, sunroof, you get the Beats exterior styling, and of course the amazing Beats interior sound system. That color coordination continues on the inside where that white color of the main body outside is then continued onto the front face of the dash with some extra Beats audio styling over on this corner. The seats are extremely comfortable. In fact, they're heated. And, and actually, these are probably the fastest heated seats I've ever had to actually get to full temperature. In about 30 to 40 seconds, your back is sweating. And headroom and passenger room, well, this is a surprising thing. The interior overall size is what really makes the up stand out from I would say all of its competitors. It did not only my basic gear test, then went on to do this. And hey, if double bass isn't your thing, how about a drum kit in the back as well? So from the cabin area, this is an extremely well-built and surprisingly spacious area to be. It's quite on long runs and on two to three hour journeys, you don't feel like it's laborious. It's not deafening you. You find it quite easy. Onto the outside and that's where this really does quite well. It's not an ugly car. However, they are slightly boxy. That kind of goes with its whole city vibe. However, what this does do very, very well is city driving. You're gonna see around 50 to 55 miles per gallon around town, almost regardless of how you drive. It's aerodynamic to an extent. At 70 miles an hour, you do feel that you are getting a little bucketed by the wind, but no more than you would do in anything like an iGo. It's just one of those small light car things. The gig test, it compromises of a multitude of factors from comfort in driving, fuel economy, weight bearing, puts them all into one. This is a one litre, which technically doesn't have much boost at all, and definitely doesn't have a lot of torque. So I'm wondering how this is gonna cope with all my equipment in the back on a, you know, a good 30 mile run there, 30 mile run back. What fuel economy am I gonna see? Seven point six miles per gallon. My back isn't broken, and it's an easy drive, even on A road, B road, motorways. This fits in. It's not just a city car. And with the Beats edition of this car, you do have the colour coordination outside, which really does make this stand out. However, in a car park, there is a chance you'll lose the car because it's so small. Performance-wise, this is a ninety PS engine, and it's surprising. Around town, it's definitely one of the nippier cars I've driven. But on the motorway, you do notice that there is a significant lack of, you know, top end torque. But that said, it's not enough to hold you back. I drove this around the M25 in peak rush hour, and at no point did I want for any more power. You had just enough to nip out when you needed it, and this sits at 70 miles an hour extraordinarily well. The things I don't like are the fact that it doesn't have a six-speed box. 
but it's a city car. So you kind of forgive it for that. There's an app that comes with the car and that app gives you anything from like Think Blue Trainer to selecting your tracks on your phone to play through uh, from your iTunes folder on your phone if you've got an Apple iPhone. I would say it's quite an essential app. You can't get this information in any other way. But there's no USB plug to keep your phone charged while you use it. sound quality is extremely good. While I feel that while it's really cranked up, the bottom end does disappear a little bit, you can sort quite a lot of that out by doing your own custom EQ. But really, this is just a superbly well-built, cheap car. I mean, £13,000 or just above for this on the road, including all your dealer fees and delivery fees and all those bits and pieces. It's an absolute bargain. It's got a low insurance group, it's got a low CO2 output, and it's got a really good safety rating. Overall, I found it extremely comfortable, and on every kind of gig test that I could put it through, it excelled, including over 60 miles per gallon on motorway runs at 70 miles an hour. I can't fault this for what it is and the demographic that it's going for. It's not going to be a perfect business car if you do long trips on the motorway, but if you work around town or you don't do long distances, I don't actually think you can get any better than the Volkswagen Up. My only advice would be that if you were looking at an up, maybe you want to look at a slightly higher spec. The bottom, bottom end spec is bottom end. You don't have any controls on the steering wheel. You have manual heater controls. And for a little bit more, you get quite a lot more.